We're first of all just going to set up Windows to make sure that that is configured correctly. So we're going to open the NVIDIA control panel. Obviously, if you're using an AMD card, then you use the graphics card settings for AMD. In here, in the NVIDIA control panel, we're going to go down to change resolution and we are going to make sure that we've set at 2560 by 1440, the native resolution. Set refresh rate at 240 hertz on the right hand side. And then at the bottom, we're going to want to scroll down and select to use NVIDIA color settings where you have access to control these yourself. And then you can increase the output color depth from the 8-bit default to 10-bit or even 12-bit. There's not really much benefit in running 12, but there's no harm in doing so. So we might as well select that. And then that will make sure that we're inputting the maximum color depth for the panel rather than an 8-bit limit. We're going to set the screen up in both SDR and HDR modes. So first of all, let's do SDR. We'll open up the main menu and we're going to set a mode up first of all for wide gamut operation and then we'll also tweak the sRGB uh, emulation mode as well. So Gamer 1 will be our wide gamut preset. So we're going to leave that as it is for now. Come down to the picture adjust menu. Now the brightness defaults to 100% but we're going to want to turn that down. I'm going to turn that down to 79. So that will give you a luminance of around 120 nits. If you want to go a bit higher at 150 or close to 200 nits, we'll leave the, the settings on the screen for you so you can set that accordingly. But we're gonna go with 79 for our testing at 120. Next up, contrast. So this is a strange one. So in the gamer preset modes, the contrast is set low. It's at 60 in gamer one and 55 in gamer two. Now actually the factory calibrated sRGB mode and the hardware calibrated modes by default will be set at 70. So that seems to be the optimal setting for contrast. So we're gonna bump that up to 70. Sharpness you can leave at 50. Gamma mode two is fine. That's the closest to our target of 2.2 gamma. Color temp, leave that on custom, but we are gonna to want to tweak the RGB channels a little bit because the default is a little cool, well, quite a lot cool and overly blue. So we're going to want to turn the blue setting down to a setting of 44. Now leave the others as they are and that will return you a white point very close to 6,500K. So we've done the picture adjust menu. Another thing you might want to do is come down into the general section and scroll down somewhere in here is smart energy saving just make sure that's turned off that would just adjust your brightness uh, dynamically for different content i just find that's annoying so we're, we're setting the screen up specifically for a set brightness here so let's turn that off it already is in our case we've already turned that off one other setting you might want to have a look at is in the game adjust section so in there there's the black stabilizer control so that's set as 50 as the default we did a range of testing on some black uh, and gray scale patterns and found that actually bumping this up to a setting of 60 is likely to be preferable for most people. It brings out a lot more of the detail near black, but importantly, without raising black level itself. If you go above 60, then blacks actually start to become dark gray. Obviously, we don't want that. We want to retain the black depth, but it will help bring out some of the shadow detail. Now, this might vary a little bit by panel. Um, what we can do is leave a link in the description below to um, a test pattern that if you download it, you'll be able to view some uh, black levels and then you can tweak the setting to your preference uh, depending on how many of those gray shades you can see. I'll leave some instructions in the description as well. We found 60 to be uh, preferable there to help bring out some of that detail. Uh, let's set that at 60. So that is our setup for the game mode, Gamer 1, that's in wide gamut. The only other thing we'll do right now is go into the OLED care options. Now you've got a few options in here that you may or may not want to change. I've left screen move off because personally I find that annoying with the screen shifting uh, from time to time. I've no idea what the difference is between the four modes. If you're particularly worried about um, image retention and burning, then you may want to leave one of these turned on. Uh, maybe experiment to see which one uh, looks best to you and is less intrusive, but that would help uh, mitigate some of the risks of image retention on an OLED panel like this. Um, screen saver, leave that on, that would just turn the screen off. 
depending on if you leave it inactive for a period of time, seems a no-brainer to leave that, that turned on. Um, image cleaning and pixel cleaning, you don't need to do those, will run automatically from time to time depending on your usage. So for us, we've just turned screen move off or left it turned off and left screen saver turned on. So that's the OLED care options. So now we're gonna set up the sRGB mode. So the Gamer One mode with its wide gamut is probably gonna be preferable for games, for HDR content. You're gonna get more vivid and saturated colors. But if you want a mode that is more accurate for SDR content, working with sRGB colors, that kind of thing, then the sRGB mode carries a pretty decent factory calibration. But we can make a couple of tweaks to improve things as well. So we're gonna set sRGB in the game mode you will notice that black stabilizer is not actually available in this mode at all. So we can't tweak that. We're just gonna to have to leave it as it is. Um, but in the picture mode settings, we're going to make some adjustments to the brightness and the RGB channels again. So brightness actually doesn't reach as high in sRGB as it does in the Gamer One mode. So we're just gonna turn that down a tad to 87. So that will deliver us a luminance of 120 nits in sRGB. Again, I'll leave some other options on the screen for you. So we're gonna set that. Contrast you'll see is set at 70, uh, that's fine. RGB, this is the only other option you have available. So we're going to again turn the blue channel down a little bit, not as far as in Gamer 1, because the, the setup is slightly different here. We're just gonna turn that down to 48. So we're gonna have 50, 50, 48. That will give us a nice white point close to 6,500K in sRGB mode. You don't really need to change anything else. Uh, obviously you can turn adapter sync on or off depending on what you want. And that is sRGB mode set up. So you can just quickly and easily, well, I mean, it is a bit annoying to have to scroll, but you can uh, switch between those two modes depending on your content. Now we're gonna set up HDR mode. There's only a couple of settings you actually need to change here. So we've turned HDR on in Windows. And you'll see now that you've only got access to five different preset modes in HDR. Now we prefer to use Gamer 2. Gamer 1 and Gamer 2 are very similar in terms of setup for white point, color temperature. They reach the same approximate peak brightness as well. But Gamer 2 has a slightly better um, or slightly brighter image in dark and mid gray shades we found. So I think most people will probably find that preferable just to give you a little bit of a, a brightness and detail boost, particularly in darker gray shades. So we're gonna use Gamer 2 and in the game menu you can turn adapter sync on or off obviously we can't adjust black stabilizer here unfortunately so we can't tweak that at all picture mode let's leave a, a brightness at 100 percent so that will make sure that you get the maximum peak brightness possible of the panel in gamer 2 you'll see the sharpness has boosted been boosted up to 70 percent uh, instead of the default 50. So you can, you can adjust this depending on your viewing position and your distance from your screen for gaming and HDR content. I probably normally turn that back down to 50, which is the default and the same as Gamer 1. Now you don't have access to any other settings in picture and that's about actually all you can adjust in HDR mode. 